Hello again, Glitch Reaper here. I'm back for some more magic duels. In this case, more of the Origins uh, story mode. In this case, because we've went through Gideon, we're going to be going to Jace Bellerin. Now, I do believe that the cutscenes were one time only, so sorry about that. Uh, but it, it's more motivation for you to actually play the game there, so win win. Uh, now, as for Jace, he's got a very different storyline. Each of the major Planeswalkers of Origins each has a very distinctive, uh, well, personality. And part of that is from their upbringing. Yeah, darn lips. Uh, part of that is from their upbringing. Anyhow, we're going with Jace's story. So, Jace Bellerin. You're Jace Bellerin, a 13-year-old living on one of the towering mage rings of Bryn. You are a natural at mind magic, able to hear the thoughts of those around you. It's difficult for you to connect with others, as you are painfully aware that they think you're a freak. <laughs> now, this guy is a weirdo. <laughs> but, hey, sometimes it, it pays to be that way. So, you often seek the solitude afforded by the apex of the mage ring. It's the only place where the thoughts of others can't reach you and bombard your mind. Usually it's quite here. But not today. Okay, you know something's gonna go down. The thing about it is telepathy usually has a range, so he's just trying to use sheer distance to get away from people's thoughts. It's going, it's noisy, so I'm going way up here where nobody can find me. And then people find him. And he's like, oh, come on now. <laughs> Mage ring bullies. Okay, my turn. Okay, this gives me an opportunity to choose whether or not I mulligan. So that's something. Hadn't had that before. Uh, now, whenever you're in these story missions, you usually have a lot of mana, so. Uh, uh, because you get like tons of lands in the deck. So that does help. Uh, looks like this is nothing I could do for quite some time turns actually so I'm definitely gonna have to take a mulligan on that. The, th the first mulligan is the same hand size. Whenever you take a mulligan you uh, don't discard your hand. What you do is you reshuffle it into your deck and draw again. So therefore whenever you're drawing from your library for another hand it's uh, uh, actually pretty much easy. Now the first one is basically free but as you can see here it's saying can keep this hand or draw a new hand of six cards. Well, after the first mulligan, you have to keep uh, changing your hand size and going downwards slowly. That can actually sometimes be a good thing to limit yourself a bit on hand size, but it depends. If you're trying to outplay their deck in terms of sheer numbers, you might actually want to purposefully take less cards so you have more left in your library. That's just an interesting thought for later. The more important thing is sometimes in these story missions you have a set hand that you start with and you don't have this option, but other times you do have a random hand, and this means that you can kind of explore their decks over time and figure out what's the best combinations, including ones that's best to start with. Now, one really good one to start with is Fog Bank. If this thing has Defender, Flying, and, per and you prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by Fog Bank. Which means basically it's quite invulnerable. This is a wall. Most walls have Defender, meaning that they can't attack. And this one probably should be an elemental wall since it's made of fog. But, uh, oh well. Anyhow, it's very important to have this in any of Jace's story missions in which you can have it. Because it's basically an invulnerable blocker, so you get <laughs> free defense. Well, after you get a plate, of course. But yeah, I'm keeping this hand because that is a very important card. So I may not be able to actually play any spell this turn, but after laying down this land, this means my next turn, I will definitely get, uh, get one out that uh, will actually do something important. So it's time to actually play a spell and one that means that uh, they won't be able to do anything against me for quite some time. At least uh, one creature per turn gets completely blocked. So I'm going with the fog bank. And remember, a lot of these will only be found in the uh, in the story missions. Ashmith Hound. 
The Rashmith Hound blocks or becomes blocked by a creature. It deals one damage to that creature. Okay. See, that's the thing. Uh, while this is stopping combat damage, you'll still take that one point of damage from this. However, it has two points of toughness, so that doesn't matter. Even this isn't going to get through. <laughs> but basically, every time uh, something tries blocking it, uh, then it automatically deals it some damage. So that's a bit of a trick. Let's see if they just bait themselves in. <laughs> Reckless Brute. Uh, attacks each turn if able. <laughs> and has haste, so it's going to be attacking right now. Hope we don't have to do this all over again. Okay, it's attacking double. Yeah, y you guys definitely are bullies, because your stuff has to attack, so that's definitely all-out aggression. Let me see, I'll block this. Uh, the thing is, because of its special ability, it would take this out before it can actually deal damage to this hound. So, therefore, it would just be wiped out, and that would be a problem. But if, uh, if they don't have the ability to put down another creature, which they don't seem to, I'll get a free attack next round. So I'm going to let some of that pass. At least for now. Because they're going to definitely deal with a very powerful creature very soon. Because on my next turn, where we're at right now, I'm playing a dragon. Phantasmal dragon. One of Jace's special cards. Flying and... Uh, Th this means that you have to be careful about it, because whenever it comes to target of a spell or ability, you have to sacrifice it. But with 5-5 five, five and flying, <laughs> this Dragon Illusion is going to deal some damage if it gets to it. Right now, I'm going to just hit him for a couple, kind of evening things out. I don't know if this is going to go through all out or not. Comes the target of a spell or ability. Uh, does that... Well, the fog bank will take care of this thing anyhow. And since they're only attacking with one creature, I don't have to worry about it. I think they're just trying to prevent an all out assault. Majoring bully. Uh, yeah, you're playing yourself here. Uh, has prowess and must attack each turn if able. Uh, this card is in Magic Origins in terms of the actual set, so you might see him in game. Although, since it has to attack, sometimes that goes four and again. Well, that usually goes more against you than four. <laughs> just, just saying. Now, the prowess, on the other hand, helps. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So basically, if you cast an instant, sorcery, enchantment, whatever, then they'll automatically uh, gain some power and toughness till the end of turn for each time that you do that. Hmm. Divination or another... Well, actually, I can do both. Yeah, I, c I can do both, so... Uh... Now, this has an effect that also allows you to draw a card. The Azure Mage, 2-1, has uh, pay th uh, 3 generic and 1 blue draw a card. Uh, that's actually a little more expensive than using this spell, Divination. It lets you draw 2 cards for only 2 and 1 blue. But as a sorcery, this means you can only use it once. The key to unlocking this puzzle is within you. Dun dun dun. That deep and useful. I draw two cards. I get another Azure Mage. These are stacking up quickly. Uh, the big thing is I'm going to attack with this dragon because they... Uh, they can't block it. They might be able to take it out otherwise, but they can't block it right now. They don't have flying. 
Illusionary strike. And you got whooped by something that doesn't technically exist. Because <laughs> it says it's an illusion. Well, he is a mine mage, so yeah. I have two of these, so I can use one to take this thing out. I'm gonna protect that one. And use that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and let one creature go in order to take that Maidring Bully down. Yeah, I, I just whacked you. Because it's clearly you. <laughs> Come on, you're playing yourself here. Now this effect is pure uh, pay and get the effect, so I don't actually have to tap them. But I'm going to go ahead and draw that card. Ah, another fog bank. Next time I get two attackers. Uh, I, I mean, next time I'll have two defenders that won't be easily defeated. Uh, that that. So I'll have two walls that are really good walls. It's it's too bad that you don't get fog banks in the uh, uh, actual magic duels game here. Ten points ahead right now. It's eighteen to eight. Because because having an invulnerable attacker would be cool. I mean, you only prevent combat damage. You can still take it out with spells and abilities for that matter. Right now they're just walled. Maybe this time the computer is a little unlucky with creatures. Although that, oh my gosh. Flying in haste. That thing is definitely <laughs> uh, powerful. The thing is, I need something that will let me get past that dragon. Mechanic Dragon, Haste, Flying, 4-4. Four, four. Okay, uh... Sometimes an eruption in ship produces something more dangerous than a mere river of molten rock. I right, say, hey, let's just throw a, throw a dragon out. <laughs> I can see that being a problem. Okay. I'm definitely gonna need to draw another card, because... That dragon. Phantom Warrior can't be blocked that could work thing is if this blocks then it'll be taken down because I have more power and toughness and they're tapped out in terms of uh, land so they don't have any mana to pull off any quick trick right now and I don't think in this game there's anything that can be cast completely free so I'll see if they're willing to let go of that dragon just to stop me from taking them down another five points in one shot Oh yeah, <laughs> they're getting desperate. Smack. Goodbye. <laughs> the real dragon was beaten by an illusory dragon. Dun dun dun. Behold the power of... Well, the mind. Another Reckless Brute. Well, I have two invulnerable blockers, so I should be fine. Plus, they're gonna take a lot of damage really soon. Phantom Warrior. Dun dun dun. Phantom Warrior cannot be blocked. Simply unblockable. It's an illusion warrior. <laughs> Going right through a door like, yeah, yeah, clearly I'm not real. I'm, I'm facing through a, a, a door. <laughs> The construction of a defense is not accomplished by adding bricks. <laughs> Quoted by Jace Bellerin. Nice. <laughs> okay. Let's continue the streak of drawing cards. <laughs> Sometimes drawing extra cards really helps. Separatist Void Mage. Yeah, you, you can get this one in, in this game. Because it's also from uh, Magic Origins. When Separatist Void Mage enters the battlefield, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. It can come in handy for clearing a few things out. Uh, I will attack just with my Phantasmal Dragon because he doesn't have anything with flying. Mm -hmm. 
That is a nice swirl for the attack. Yep. Like, get vortexed. <laughs> Doesn't get anything with flying out next. It's doomed. Oh, come on. I have two of these. You're only attacking with two creatures. You might have just got something else through if you had actually went all out. But no, this is going to be a very, pretty much one-sided victory. Especially when now I can unleash everything myself. Let's see, how many points of damage will that be? Two, seven... A nine points of damage? Uh, ouch. Yeah, I, I almost feel sorry for this. Almost, but they're bullies, so I can't really feel sorry for them. <laughs> Ew, that, that goes back to your hand. Shoo. I'll draw a card. Blind Phantasm. Just an illusion. And I attack with all. Big finish. Let's see, seven, nine. Oh, that's like 11 points of damage. So, 11 points of damage. Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be painful. So many swirls in the attack animations here. Uh, that, that one had a slash. Minus 8 to 18. <laughs> I was up by 20 points. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Enraged by your defiance, the bullies throw you off the ring. You desperately cling to the edge. Before you know what's happening, you telepathically force one of the bullies to save your life. Uh, you've won the fight, but the danger your abilities pose has become painfully apparent. <laughs> now you just telepathically say, hey, grab me. <laughs> I mean, it's your fault I'm here. Grab me. <laughs> Hey, at least he got him to take some responsibility there. <laughs> so, nice shot, Jace. Nice shot. And that's it for this section of uh, the story mode for Jace Bellerin. We'll be going on to considerably more over time. But for now, I'll be uh, logging off. So this has been Glitch Reaper. Hope to hear from you all later. And bye for now, everybody. <laughs>